for whatever reason, I actually feel kind of nervous. All right, so here we are. We've got the S24 Ultra in titanium purple. And as somebody who has been using Apple devices for the last couple of years, pretty much exclusively, I'm actually nervous about cracking this guy open. It's not that I've not used a Samsung or Android device before, because I've got the Google Pixel 8 Pro. The last Samsung that I used and what actually started my YouTube channel was the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, but I've not even touched one since then. So I picked up the S24 Ultra, super excited to see what this is about. I've got the 512 gigabyte variant. So without wasting any more time, let's see what's inside the box. Ah. Nice, easy unboxing experience. It's not as smooth as the iPhones, if that even means anything, probably not. And so right off the top, as you can see, we've got the titanium purple and to compare it, I know we're slowing down the unboxing. I've got my purple iPhone 14 Pro Max just to see which one of these purples is the best. So the best way that I can describe it is the purple on the Samsung is just a little bit darker than the purple on the 14 Pro Max. Both look pretty nice depending on how you catch the light, but I'm gonna have to go with the iPhone 14 Pro Max on this one. I do wish the purple was a little bit lighter, but we'll save that for a second. So in terms of the unboxing experience, there's nothing in the bottom, which is kind of weird. And then everything is in the top part of the case. At least it sounds like it is. Okay, so this pops out. And as you can expect, there's no charging brick. I do believe there's a charging cord. So you've got your SIM tool, a USB-C to USB-C, charging cable and that's the entire unboxing experience so coming back to the s24 ultra this year it is made out of titanium just like my iphone 15 pro max here if i'm holding the two side by side without looking up the numbers the s24 ultra actually feels lighter in my hands that's probably wrong when you look it up but the balance on this guy is actually really really nice and then in terms of just the two of these the feeling of them in your hands I know that the iPhones have been rounded off this year, so they're a little bit more comfortable and don't have any sharp edges. Whereas on the S24 Ultra, the design is pretty much unchanged this year again compared to last year's model. However, it does have a flat screen this time around. It still has the sharp edges on the bottom of the phone, so I don't know if that's going to annoy people, but as someone who's holding an Ultra device for the first time, this is actually the first time I've ever really held an Ultra. Um, it does seem like it would be nice and pretty comfortable to use that as a spot for your pinky. Anyways, the most important part of any phone unboxing is that peel. Let's get this ripped off. And as you can see, I already ripped it, so the entire experience is ruined. But let's see if we can salvage it. Ah, super satisfying. So looking at this colorway, this is the titanium purple. And part of the reason why I chose it is because it was the only one, as far as I could tell, that had that two-tone design. So around the edges you've got this silver looking color and then on the back it's obviously the titanium purple and it also has that same two-tone around the rim so the rims of each of the lenses on the back are also going to be that silver color one thing that's kind of concerning that i've seen with this phone and that back really feels nice um one thing concerning that i've seen with this this colorway specifically is when there are scratches on the back it appears that the scratches come through as silver, so just something to be cognizant of if you're looking at buying this phone. So let's power it on. Really quick, another thing that I forgot to mention for those that may not know, despite this being a purple and silver colorway, the S Pen on this S24 Ultra is actually a gray slash silvery color, so it kind of matches the rails on the S24. Probably won't use this that often. I don't remember using it much on the Note 10 Plus aside from signing a couple documents, but still nice to have. Yeah, overall, I gotta say, this does feel really, really nice in my hand. I do have very large hands, so it's a 6.8 inch display, similar to the iPhone uh, 15 Pro Max, very, very large. For some people, it might be too big for your hands, I don't know, but for me, it doesn't look terrible. Like, this looks, I think, pretty normal, pretty comfortable for someone with hands as large as mine. So by comparison, 15 Pro Max and my hand size kind of makes it feel like just a regular Pro and then the S24 Ultra and my hand size so I think it's like the perfect size for me. So we're gonna go ahead and do the initial setup. I'm not gonna download all of my apps and stuff right now. I'll save that for my actual review but let's just jump in and see what the screen looks like. 
because I know there's a ton of new features when it comes to this phone. So that took a little bit longer than expected. As you can see, there's now a third phone on the table. I had to go get my Pixel 8 Pro to transfer everything over to the S24 Ultra. If you've never done that process before, it's actually kind of weird. Maybe this is new or only new to me, but it sends this high frequency noise in order for the Samsung Galaxy to pick it up and then somehow they connect. There you go, it's done, it's done transferring. Um, somehow they connect using that high frequency noise. It's very loud and irritating to those who can hear that high frequency, but um, other than that, the process is relatively quick. So jumping into the S24 Ultra, I've got most of it set up now at this point. Uh, the most important, this is really loud. One of the first things that you should do when you grab these phones is to jump into your settings, run over to the display settings, and you're gonna wanna adjust the motion smoothness, make sure that it's running that 120 hertz, and then also make sure that you're not on the natural but the vivid screen mode. This is actually one area of contention with this phone already is a lot of people are complaining that the vivid mode or the vivid colors on the S24 Ultra don't match up with the previous iterations. That is to say, the colors aren't as saturated. So far, I don't have any issues with that, but I can understand how that might be annoying for some people. Uh, the next thing is the screen resolution. So you bought this phone for the display. You can't tell me otherwise. Anyone that bought this phone wants the best looking display. So rather than FHD, you should be at QHD plus, and that's just gonna sharpen up things a little bit more and make your phone look all the better. Now that everything's set up, this is really clean. I've been using this for probably 30 minutes now. It is kind of warm to the touch, but that's probably has more to do with the transfer of all the data than anything else. But overall, the screen looks very nice. One major feature that was introduced this year is the new coating on the display. So it has an anti-reflective coating on it. So if I were to hold these two phones side by side, uh, the S24 Ultra and the iPhone 15 Pro Max, there is significantly more glare coming off of the 15 Pro Max than there is the S24 Ultra. And same thing if I were to hold it beside the Pixel 8 Pro, lots of glare coming off the Pixel, not so much coming off of the S24 Ultra. I really can't get over how comfortable this is to hold. I thought that it was gonna be a little bit annoying with that corner edge there on the pinky, but overall this feels very, very good to me. I know I've said it a ton of times, but I can't get over how good this feels in my hands without a case on it. So I put a screen protector on, but I did end up picking up a case anyways. This one is from Rinky or Ring, Rinky, Rinky Dink, whatever the name is, Rinky. And the reason why I picked this up is mostly for the car. So on the inside, it has the MagSafe ring that uh, we're accustomed to now with the iPhones. And it's just one thing that I absolutely could not give up because I have a MagSafe stand in the car. I've got a MagSafe charger back here. So once you pop the S24 Ultra into the ring key case, and I just go back here and grab this charger, just to give you an example. So this is the Nomad uh, base stand, base one stand max. Nomad base one stand max which uses MagSafe to charge. And now I can just stick my S24 Ultra on it and it stays in place without any issues whatsoever. Obviously it's not charged right now because it's not plugged in, but definitely one feature that I just couldn't give up. I'll still use the phone without a case for the most part, but when I'm at home to charge it or when I'm in the car and I'm navigating or whatever the case is, it's just an unbeatable feature to be able to just pop this on quickly it locks into place and you've got nothing else to worry about. But this year I've gone caseless with my phone. So my 15 Pro Max and the uh, Pixel 8 Pro both don't have a case. The 15 Pro Max held up very well actually. There's no damage to it whatsoever. The Pixel 8 Pro not so much because of how that camera bar sits. But anyways, let's get back to the S24 Ultra. So we've got the same camera setup as the last couple of years, obviously. The only real change to the camera setup this year is that you've got a 50 megapixel uh, telephoto lens that has the 5x zoom capability opposed to the 10x lens of last year. I guess last year a lot of people didn't care to use the 10x. Maybe it was too much, I don't know. But you still have the ability to go 10x by using that 50 megapixel 5x lens without losing any quality. So really you've almost gained another lens this year in order to mix up your photos a little bit. So 
overall, this is probably the better module of any of the modules that have come out in the past because you still have that ultra crazy 200 megapixel zoom. Then you've also got more options on the lower end. So I'm looking forward to testing that part out. Uh, so yeah, speaking of those cameras, let's run outside and take a couple shots with the S24 Ultra and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Throw them up side by side and see if you guys can tell the difference or whichever one you think looks the best. Honestly, pretty good photos on either side. On the left was the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and on the right were the photos from the S24 Ultra. Let me know down below which one you guys thought looked best. Uh, the main draw of the S24 Ultra this year is all of the new AI features. So one feature that I've been waiting to test out is that new circle to search feature. So apparently, if I just open up uh, essentially any app. I wanna find something more difficult for it though. So men's fashion, we're gonna find a picture of a dude that's looking stylish. All right, so this guy here on Pinterest, he's wearing a nice button up there, some cool pants. So let's say I was interested in figuring out what shoes he's wearing. I can just circle his shoes apparently. And then we've got Shell Cordovan collection, men's Oxford formal slip-ons. And these do look like what he was wearing in that original photo. So a really cool feature. Now, if you're on YouTube or you're on Instagram, whatever the case is, and you see something that you're interested in, not necessarily just to buy it, but just you're interested for whatever reason, all you have to do is hold that home button. You can circle it, you can scribble on it, you can draw a line on it, whatever you wanna do. And it's somehow able to use AI to figure out what it is that you have uh, selected. And then it searches that in the actual app itself, so you don't actually have to go into Chrome or, I was gonna say Safari. You don't have to go into Chrome or anything like that and then try to figure it out on your own, like men's leather shoe that looks like, blah. no, just circle it. It opens up right over top of the app that you're using and then you're good to go. Just a quick rundown on the specs of this phone. You've got a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Apparently last year's phone was already a battery beast, so I'm expecting this one to be a little bit better. You've got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 in this phone as well. And just like the iPhone 15 Pro lineup, gaming on this phone is supposed to be unbelievable. And you've got the ray tracing and all that stuff going on now. I don't know what mobile games even use that, but it seems pretty cool. And again, this is the 512 gigabyte storage version, and you've got 12 gigs of RAM inside of this phone. So overall, on paper, it seems like an absolute beast. So if you're interested in the perspective of someone who's predominantly an Apple and iPhone user jumping into the S24 Ultra, then feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to come back. I do intend to do a full day in the life and if you've ever seen one of my day in the life videos before, I think they're pretty good. So maybe that's worth a follow to you, um, as well as a full review. Tons of short form content over on TikTok and Instagram as well. So uh, definitely keep your eyes peeled if you're interested in seeing that. Oh, and before I forget, we are all in. So I'm getting rid of my Apple Watch Ultra. I couldn't find the Galaxy Watch or whatever it's called. I think that's the name of it, Galaxy Watch. So I've got the Tick Watch Pro 5, which also has the Snapdragon W5 Gen 1 in it. Um, apparently this is a fantastic smartwatch that rivals the S, I was gonna say S, the Apple Watch Ultra, except for the fact that this isn't waterproof apparently. So um, definitely going to be dropping some videos on this as well. So again, if that's something that you're interested in. And so that's pretty much it. Much love as always, throwing up two of them and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.